So good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much, John, uh, for inviting me today. I've worked quite closely with the Huntington's Disease Association over the last couple of years. So it is a real privilege to be able to speak to you this afternoon about keeping active with Huntington's disease. So I'm a physiotherapy lecturer from Cardiff University and my main area of research is about physical activity and in this instance in Huntington's disease. So what I'm gonna to do today is share the latest projects uh, with you about keeping active. I'm going to talk about the keeping active resource that hopefully you've been um, sent the link so you can see it online. Some of you may actually have a paper copy and I'll let you know how you can actually get a paper copy if, if that's what you prefer. So I'm going to start off with, well, what is being active? What is keeping active all about? What is physical activity? Oh, is that the same as exercise? Is that the same as sport? Because some people think, oh, physical activity, that means I could go and run a marathon or play a rugby match or, you know, swim the channel. And it's not that. that. That is physical activity, but it's also any movement. And that's what I'd, I'd like to promote is keeping moving. And that could be during leisure, so walking the dog, walking to the cafe, anything like that, going fishing, strolling along. It could be running, it could be exercise, but it could be any of those things. It could be what you do for your job is, is physically active as well. I know as physiotherapists, we are very active. Um, they were walking up and down wards and, and doing lots of activity with people. So it's a very active job. Your job may be active as well. And also physical activity is how you about getting to and from places. That could be work, it could be the shops, it could be the coffee shop, whatever it is, um, you could, be active doing that um that that's all physical activity physical activity is any movement that you do and it includes exercise and sport so just sort of getting that at, at the beginning so what are the benefits of physical activity well i think you know everybody knows that there uh, are benefits to being physically active, but I thought it might be helpful to have a little reminder of what they are. Now this, I like this poster, it's from an American government source, but you know, it's equally applicable to uh, the UK, Europe, or wh wherever you're watching from. And I like it because it breaks it down into what the immediate benefits of physical activity are and what are the long-term benefits. So one single bout of moderate to vigorous physical activity can improve your sleep. And you may know this from, you know, being active in a day, because oh, I actually slept a lot better last night. Oh, I wonder was that because I was walking yesterday? It can reduce feelings of anxiety. It can reduce blood pressure. And there's some research coming out now that it can actually boost immune function. So, so that's really good. And then if you do physical activity regularly over a long period of time, it has such a range of benefits. And that can be related to brain health, so reducing the risks of dementia and stroke, heart health, so lowering risks of heart disease and stroke. It lowers the risks of eight different cancers, and this is all based on research. It helps keep weight at a healthy level. And we know that being overweight has its own problems. So if we can keep weight at a healthy level, then um, that's beneficial and physical activity can help with that. It improves bone strength. So uh, if you're getting older, uh, you know that you want to keep your bones as strong as possible uh, to minimize the risk of fractures if there's a fall. And thinking of falls, reducing the risk of falls, so physical activity can benefit balance and coordination. So these are all benefits to everybody, um, to people with Huntington's disease and those without Huntington's disease. But I think it's really important to actually look at the literature on Huntington's disease as well, to show that actually there has been research that has shown 
that physical activity and exercise can improve balance confidence. So that can be that you're feeling better about your balance and therefore that might have an impact on falls and mobility because physical activity and exercise improves mobility in people with Huntington's disease. It improves independence, so being able to do things on your own and improves posture and breathing, so being able to cope with any respiratory infections. So we've got two things there, the general benefits of physical activity uh, for everybody, and then the specific benefits for people with Huntington's disease. So I've been working for quite a few years now, looking at physical activity and looking at ways in which we can promote and inspire people and support people to be physically active. And last summer, um, I had three students from, or two students, sorry, from Cardiff University, who uh, interviewed three people about keeping physically active with Huntington's disease. So we've got Chris and we've got Simon, who both have Huntington's disease, and Suzanne, who cares for her husband, who has Huntington's disease. And these are all available on the HDA website. So I'm just going to pull out a few bits from their, their stories. So you can see Chris here is in his allotment and a lot of his story was about his allotment. You can see the cabbages in the background digging up his potatoes. And a lot of his physical activity is about being at the allotment, getting to the allotment, working at the allotment. And I just wanted to read out what he was saying about advice about physical activity. So we've got this story here. So here's his advice. So with the progressive condition that I have, it's quite easy to roll up in a ball and I get some mornings where I don't want to get out of bed, but I always do. I just try to do something positive and take the opportunities available to me. Set yourself a goal. You don't need to start and finish it on the same day. Take your time. If it takes several weeks, it takes several weeks but just aim to achieve your goal. Doesn't matter what you do besides just doing something positive and then enjoying the outcome of it. It could be anything, even walking. And if you come to the end of the walk and have a positive thought from it, even if it's just one positive thought for the day, that's a bonus. So I love that bit uh, of Chris talking about that, that positive feeling, so that mental well-being with physical activity. So then Suzanne, uh, Suzanne did a lot of does a lot of traveling with her husband and she likes to keep very fit herself. And what comes out is, well, how can she support her husband being active, but also keeping active herself? Um, so it's about what she does with Nick and then what she does on her own to keep her physical activity up. So what her advice to other families is, it's never too soon to start even if you're not showing symptoms yet, start now. It's great for you, great for your family to just get out there. Even starting in your 20s and 30s will have that benefit as you go on. Just find a comfortable place you can walk. It doesn't have to be glamorous. You don't have to drive two hours to get to the beach. Sometimes it's better to just get out your front door. But turn left instead of right one day walk up the hill instead of down and enjoy being nosy in your local area. So I think this came uh, a lot from lockdown when people were just walking in their local area and Suzanne was telling us about how, how interesting it was finding out what was going on in her area. And then Simon's story. So Simon was very active um, when he was younger, trail running, marathon running, etc., he's not able to do that now, but he still gets joy from being physically active. And what I wanted to share with you was his image. So one of the students used a drawing out method where she asked Simon to draw something that represented physical activity to him. And this is his drawing. And what he says is that his feelings towards physical activity would be represented by cloud inversion. So you get it in the Peak District, which is near him, and it's usually early in the morning. 
The valleys are filled with low lying clouds. So if you're standing at the bottom, it would be a misty, gloomy, dull day. But when you climb the hills, you see a view like the one you see out of an airplane taking off. As the plane pulls up, you break through the clouds and suddenly it's bright. I don't climb mountains anymore, but standing on the hilltop, I see the most beautiful summer's day. You can see the tops of the clouds, the sun and the hills around, sticking up out of the mist. But he also says that the cloud in the valley represents the symptoms to him, the foggy headaches, the tiredness, the stiffness. If you can motivate yourself to come out of the valley, you find yourself above the clouds and see it's a pleasant day. But some days are harder than others. Going out and exercising, it's not always easy. Sometimes it's just cloudy and you don't get above the clouds. Sometimes it's just a bad day and that's okay. But he always says he feels better for doing some exercise. So I'll end, end that one on a high. So these are some stories that we've got to help inspire and, and give tips and hints to people about being physically active. So I've chatted uh, enough for the first bit. What I'd like to do is find out from you now, why do you or the person you care for want to keep active? So if you could put your thoughts in the chat. So lovely to promote independence and autonomy. So that's that's really good. Neris, I'm, I'm presuming you may be a carer. Um, so you're helping the person you care for be as independent for as long as possible and, and gathering. And autonomy, and I think that's so important that this is something that a person with Huntington's disease can take control of their self. They may need a little bit of helping and guiding along, but it does give them autonomy for her own well-being as a carer. So being active, sharing that activity or being active yourself, it's about own uh, well-being uh, to improve your own mental stability. You keep them walking. So I think that's really important. Keeping walking. We now, you know, there's evidence emerging that sedentary lifestyle is a real uh, poor thing to do. It's really bad for your health to be sitting all the time. Um, and, you know, I'm working, but I can be, you know, sitting all the time too. So I need to get up. So I've got my standing desk here. It's really important to get up get that flexibility, help the digestive system work effectively by standing up. So to keep somebody walking, to be able to be almost independent and physically as strong as possible. Yeah, uh, physical activity can be fun and provides me with a chance to unwind. Yes, I think it definitely can. Um, you know, I think when people say exercise and I'm, I'm the same, I hit the sort of doing three sets of 10 squats oh gosh no but if I could go out and do something like walking up a hill and if it did the same thing that'd be much better fun than just doing boring exercise so they're really important what I'm pulling out of here is that it's for the person with Huntington's disease it's about keeping independence keeping a strong uh, for as long as possible but for carers um, and or people with Huntington's disease about well-being, improving their mental stability and having a bit of fun and uh, a chance to unwind. So if there's any, any more come up, then just pop them in there. And I think that's really what, what we were thinking. We know all the, the benefits from the research, but we also talk with people about how much they, they enjoy being physically active. So what we wanted to do then was develop a resource that could be used um, with people with Huntington's disease to help them plan physical activity, decide what to do, record it and set their own goals um, about what they want to do. So this is the, the keeping active resource. So I'm just going to minimise the chat now, um, but I'll pick up, if there's anything else that comes up, I'll, I'll pick it up slightly later on. So what did we do? Well, the Keeping Active with Huntington's Disease uh, 
resource. It was a project that we got funded by Cardiff University, so that, that was really good. It was based on previous work that we've done here at Cardiff University with the physical activity tool and the move to exercise videos, and I'll show those a little bit later on. And this was what we call a co-design approach, where we worked with carers, the Huntington's Disease Association, with Carers Trust Wales, uh, based in Wales, um, and to get a bigger perspective of the carer's role, and also Scarlet Design, which was a company that helped us design and develop the, the resource. Um, so, I've, sorry, I've just picked up some questions in the q and I didn't realise there were two people. Um, so we've got an OT, an occupational therapist who's passionate about people having their best quality of life, stamina, energy, uh, people being able to access more activities and keep their interests going. And somebody with Huntington's disease likes to be outside and active, but tiredness often stops this. So, um, so lots of little tips there, um, so screw tops and things, keeping strong for as, as long as possible. So I'll try and keep up with the, the Q&A slot as well. So we co-designed this resource um, to working together with lots of different people so that we hoped what we were designing was fit for purpose, that it really would um, meet the needs of carers and the people, people with Huntington's disease. So this is what the resource looks like. We've got paper copy here as well um, in this booklet. And so that's got all the information on it. And then we've got the little booklet with all the individual exercises that can be popped in a bag. So I think that you all got sent the link to the electronic version, uh, but you can also get a paper copy if you uh, ask HGA, they can send them out to you. And sometimes people prefer it in paper version, or you can print it out yourself, whatever you would like to do. So what's in this resource? I'm just going to go through some of the things that are in it. Um, we start off with safety first, because speaking with carers and people with Huntington's disease, there's a real fear of falling and, and what to do. Oh, gosh, you want to be active, but you actually bump into things. How can we stop you from falling? I think there are some things that we can do to help people fall less, but falling may be part of being active as well. And so we want people to be able to fall safely and to get up from the floor. Uh, so we've got this, these tips on how to get up from the floor using a chair, but also that some of the activities and exercises are on the floor. So you need to be able to get up off the floor before you, you get down there. So you can try that with somebody. But in, there's also other things about safety that we've put tips and hints in, you know, about getting all the equipment ready, getting a sun hat if, if it was sunny, um, or all the rain kit that, that you need so you're not going to slip in the rain. So just thinking about, well, in a way, what, what, what do I need? What could go wrong? And what do I need to help to reduce any risks of falls? And then talking to carers, I think, well, what about getting started? This resource is supposed to be for everybody with Huntington's disease. And we know that there are different phases of Huntington's disease, but so many different people as well. So what about somebody who's never done any sport or exercise activity before? What, what tips would we give? So we got some tips there. I said, that's okay. It's okay if you haven't done anything before, but if you want to get started, here are some tips. Somebody might already be doing sport or exercise or activity. And that's great. That's really great. So we've got some tips of how you can keep that going. And for some people, they may be doing activities, but it's actually getting a bit harder to do now. So we've got some tips for them. So we hope that we've covered different types of people in getting started with physical activity. And what came out from the, the workshops, uh, the workshop and the interviews we had with carers was that they really wanted a set of activities and exercises that they could use with the person. And it had that sort of authority that a physiotherapist said, this is a good exercise to do. So that they're not always, they, they, don't, they can take away that decision of, well, 
what should you do? What what is suitable for you? And these are all exercises that have been developed specifically for people with Huntington's disease. So the exercises are there that, that can be done. Some of them people may not be able to do, some of them they can, but it, it gives choice and a little bit of ownership and, as you said, autonomy about what activities the person does want to do. So we've got these range of activities and exercises and we've broken them down into flexibility, and balance and strength and physical activity and, and fitness. So they, these are all within the, the book. And then, so we, we categorize them into flexibility, balance, strength, and physical activity. And then in, in discussions with carers and the team. So well, actually, wouldn't it be really nice if you could group them together in time slots? So if somebody said, well, I've got 10 minutes, what could I do? I've got 30 minutes, what could I do? So we pulled out a selection of activities and grouped them into 10, 20 and 30 minute slots. And not only that, but we whoops, broke them down into different levels of activity. So gentle, moderate and strenuous because everybody's different. Everybody's starting from a different place. So instead of saying, oh, if you're in the early stages, do this or the mid stages, this is all about you as a person. What is gentle to you? What is moderate to you? And we guide in, in the booklet that if you had a scale of not to 10, not being no exertion, 10 being maximal exertion, gentle would be around about two to three on that scale. Moderate would be about four to five and strenuous would be about six to eight. So you can decide what level of activity you want to do. So here are some of examples of 10 minutes of activity. So gentle, starting off with some flexibility, some balance, some strength, and ending up with some relaxation. In moderate, we brought in activity. So dance to two songs. You should be able to do that within um, 10 minutes. So some warming up arm circles and calf stretches and sort of signposting back to where the exercises are and ending up with relaxation. 20 minutes, we've sort of upped the number of times you would do something, but we've put in activities like, well, what could you get done in the house in 10 to 15 minutes? Could you clean part of the bathroom or the kitchen? Or would you prefer to dance for five to 10 minutes? So we're downloading your favorite uh, music, dancing, even if it's just gentle swaying, dancing or hip hop or whatever it is that, that you want to do and then finishing off with some relaxation. Strenuous, we're really working on uh, strength here with trunk exercises, some plank exercises or dancing again. And then in half an hour, what could you put into half an hour? Maybe you could actually empty all the bins, put them outside, but taking rests when you need to. Um, maybe you could tidy a whole room in the house, doing some vacuuming and cleaning. That's all physical activity. So these are all things really we've been talking about in and around the house. But of course, there's other activities you could do. If, if we're talking about 30 minutes, it could be jogging, running, walking briskly for uh, 30 minutes. We're thinking of strenuous activity. So do think of activities inside and outside of the house. So that's generally what's in the resource. So hopefully that they're all helpful examples of exercises. But what do you think what else do you think you would need to help you and or the person you care for get and stay active? So if you can pop that in the chat. So we've got somebody who's going to the gym. That, that's really good. What, what might be helpful is, if, if you're willing, is to maybe put a bit of information in there, about whether you're a carer or what helps you if uh, get to the gym. What, what enables you to get to the gym, uh, who, who can support you doing that, and is there somebody there to support your work? So we've got an, an OT 
here saying that planning and routine to drive the activity and a goal. That's fantastic. Thank you, Jeanette. I'm going to come on to that in a second. Planning and routine are so crucial for everybody. You know, we all like to have a, a plan. It really helps with being active, you know, going to a regular class or meeting somebody regularly for a walk or a run, whatever it is. But for people with Huntington's disease, it's even more difficult because there are the problems of apathy and problems of planning, setting goals. These are all things that come with the condition. Uh, so here we have, you need others with the same motivation and ability to keep interest and less an anxiety that may be involved with activity. So that's really interesting. Thank you, Norris. Um, so yes, if you're thinking of starting to be active, that can actually increase anxiety, even though we know that activity can reduce anxiety. Actually thinking about it can make you more anxious and how do you get over that hurdle? So it is maybe important about connecting with somebody that can do things with you and reduce that anxiety. Uh, we hope that the Keeping Active resource, because it's been developed by physiotherapists and by um, carers, that you feel that it has some authority and that that might actually reduce some anxiety rather than thinking, right, I want to be active, what can I do? Am I doing the right thing? So maybe the resource in itself might reduce that. Una, there's just something, uh, someone's popped something in, in the Q&A. Ah, yes. It'd be really good to be active with others who have Huntington's. And I think that's really individual. Um, I know that some work that I've done, people don't want to be with other people with Huntington's. They'd actually rather be with people maybe with other conditions or, but it is really, really individual. So I think you're absolutely right. If if you're with other people with Huntington's disease, you can get hints and tips of how they've managed to do things and how maybe that could help you as well. So I think that that would be good. One of the problems with a rare disease is how can you group people together? They, everybody you know, lives so far apart, but maybe through some online things, it might be good to, to be active. So picking up on routine and planning. So I'm going to come back to Pat HD, the physical activity tool for Huntington's disease. So I mentioned this earlier, and this is um, actually this whole project developing uh, the physical activity tool was funded by the Huntington's Disease Association quite a few years ago. So we've got their logo in there, which was great. And so this was the first step in really promoting physical activity. Now, this is a two sided sheet of paper on its own, but it's also included within the Keeping Active resource. And this was developed so that somebody with Huntington's disease could have a conversation with their carer, a physiotherapist, an OT, the Huntington's disease advisor. They could have this conversation with anybody. It could be somebody, a physical trainer in the gym. And really, this front page is about having a conversation about physical activity. And these are the same benefits that I mentioned earlier on. Um, having a chat about well, what is physical activity and exercise and that as physiotherapists and anybody in, involved in sport will know we talk about categorizing fitness and strength and flexibility and balance these are all components of staying uh, physically fit and because we know that uh, people we want this to reach people at different stages of the condition uh, we want to talk about moving more at home for people who don't go outside very much and also moving more outside. So what could you do at home? And these images are from examples that people give us of what they do. So I, I keep coming back to dancing because I love this, this figure as well. So dancing, climbing up and down the stairs, gardening, doing DIY, and even doing things like drawing or painting because you're using your hand and helping uh, your hand function. 
outside water come into it a lot being near water it might be a lake uh, a local lake or by the sea walking archery um, and just being outside so it's about having that conversation about physical activity and then as you turn the page over it gets a bit more difficult and this is about planning so it is really good to have a plan and a goal so this is about setting goals so this is your physical activity plan and it's about thinking what's important to you what do you like doing what physical activity exercise do I do now? And it's okay if it's none at the minute. And what would you like to be able to do? And this isn't just about what would you like to be able to do in terms of physical activity. It could be something else. It could be that you'd like to go and watch an event somewhere or go to a coffee shop or play with your children, grandchildren. But how can we tag together physical activity with that? So if there's got something in your life you'd like to be able to do, can you think of a way that you can bring physical activity into that? So there's spaces here to write your ideas. But before maybe writing the plan, it's thinking, well, is there anything stopping me? Is it that I find it difficult to plan things? Is it my movement problems? What support do I need? Do I need somebody in the family, some friends, or you know, if it's somebody um, that has a paid carer coming in, could they help? Who could give you some advice? Is it a physiotherapist? Is it a local leisure center or the HD clinic or advisor? So thinking of all these things, what's stopping you? What could help you be active? And then this is the plan. What will you do? What is your goal? What will you do to achieve it? how often and where, and how can we track the progress? So you might think, well, I'd like to be able to walk to the park and do one lap of the park and have coffee with my friends. So you can think of, well, how often will you do short walks and long walks? And will you use your phone or a Fitbit or something like that to track your progress? And then tracking progress, um, this really came in from the carers workshop and particularly here, this person said, well, we have a diary. So we sit on Sunday night and we go through the diary and we plan out what's going to happen in the week ahead. We are flexible, but when we do things together with family and friends and we use music to suit the activity, all tips and hints throughout the resource. So having this, you could print this out and think, right, what's happening in this week ahead? So what are other activities? So is there something else happening? Is there a family get together? Is there, oh, you know, oh, well, we do the shopping on a Thursday. So let's put that in there. And what other physical activity, exercise or rest would you fit in around that? And then I think it's, you know, things need to be fun as well. Did you enjoy that activity? Great. If you did, then you might want to do more of that. Well, that was all right. Or no, I didn't really like that. But if you didn't like it, try something else, you know, so this can help you develop your planning. So, you know, we've got this diary in there, a calendar that you can set up. You could put it on the fridge. Some people find that a bit intimidating having it there. I think, oh gosh, what was I supposed to do? Others find it really stimulating. Yes. For me, with, with Huntington's disease, what are working in Huntington's disease, there's problems with apathy, problems with planning. So if you wake up on a Tuesday morning and think, oh, I, I should do some physical activity today, I should do something, what shall I do? Oh, I can't think of anything, I can't be bothered. But if you've got the plan there, it says, oh, you would walk somewhere or you would do an online yoga class or whatever it is, you go, oh yeah, I said I'd do that. And it sort of takes away that barrier of actually thinking about what to do today. So I, I would really promote using a, a diary like this or a planner. So just to let you know that this resource has been uh, translated into lots of different languages. We've got it in Welsh, if there's anybody from Wales here today. We have it in, I've got to try and remember now, Italian and Spanish and Swedish and Dutch and Polish. So it could be that you know somebody with Huntington's disease and they might find it more familiar to use it in this language uh, rather than the English version. So, so we have that and the little booklets and they're all available on the website. 
So I talked about a lot of the resources. Where do you get all of this information? So on these slides, and um, I'm more than happy if John sends these out afterwards. So a lot of this is based around the physiotherapy guidelines that were published, gosh, four years ago now. Um, I'm just trying to pull this up. So these are on the European Huntington's Disease Network on the physiotherapy working group part of it. You can recognize, so uh, I've obviously used a lot of the images from Scarlet Design on this web page. But here we have the clinical guidelines, promoting active lifestyles in there. So that's a, a great resource. So on the Huntington's Disease Association website, so you may have already seen this, uh, we've got the Move to Exercise DVDs. Now, these were actually developed many years ago uh, in collaboration with people with Huntington's disease and uh, Parkinson's disease. So these are all on, um, on YouTube. So uh, the HDA has the links to the YouTube channels and all broken down into different sections. And actually all the exercises we used are in the Keeping Active resource as well. We've just got them redrawn so that the, the images are nice. So we've got DVDs or videos here to show you how to do some of those exercises as well. Then we've got a specific page about physical activity on the HDA website. So we've got the, the booklet and the cards, we've got the physical activity tool, and here are all the, um, the resources in different languages. And here are the three stories that I talked about today. And also just um, very, very similar. This is in the European Huntington's Association website. We've got um, a, a page called Active Huntington's Disease, and we've got other activities and videos within there as well. So just to say it to everyone who's come along uh, to the webinar, um... This afternoon, thank you very much for, for, for attending. I really appreciate um, your participation. and um, Thank you so much for asking me to do it. <laughs>